It's finally here. The patch we've all been waiting over a year for since CN got it. I think this is the most anticipated patch since... I don't know... launch? Anyway, let's get into this guide so you can quickly get back to playing your game and enjoy the new patch. Hopefully you don't get too lost this patch because I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that the menu has been rearranged. But if you want the trial, you come into study and you just go into trial zone. So I'm going to show two things. The first thing I'm going to show is how to play Bianca. And then I'm going to show how the new team rotation looks for physical team now that Rosetta and Liv both have their leap. First up, let's talk about Bianca. Bianca has got a purple dodge gauge. Even if we dodge an enemy attack, which I'm in the wrong training room for, it won't activate. To activate this, you need to hold down dodge. Let me pull up my controller on screen so you can all see. There we go. So you can see press dodge versus hold. Now this gauge up the top is important because as this ticks down, you can see that we can charge this bar and these orbs become active. So the way to use these is whatever color this is, if you ping the same color underneath, it doesn't have to be perfectly matching and it doesn't have to be a three ping. I've activated it with two pings before, but as long as you ping the color that's underneath it before this ticks down, you can see that we used it up and her orbs will rearrange. You can also see that it only charges when we're active in that mode. So make sure you use your three pings and charge this before that timer is up. So if you watch this one, you'll see that these aren't properly aligned. So what I'll do is I'll use this first so I'm not wasting the matrix ping and then I'll use the second one and now the third one and we've got a fully charged bar. You don't need a fully charged bar depending on your rank, but obviously it gives you the most time. And then you'll move on to the next phase. So this is her phase one ult. There's the pet, by the way. So here's her phase one ult. And you'll notice we can't use our slow-mo and watch this bar ticking down that we just charged. So while that bar is depleting, you'll have more damage. And then as soon as it's depleted, you'll have less damage, but you'll still be in the ult phase one. Now you won't be able to ping orbs in this mode, but we do have these absolutely beautiful effects on Bianca, so that's nice. Now, one of these effects is actually part of the gameplay. You see this little lantern down here, and you see how the sword is lit up. That means that I can hold attack, and we got sword waves. See how the sword is no longer lit up? That means I can't do it. To get that back, then you can either do a full combo and attack, and then once you get to the leap back, that's where the sword charges again and you get your lantern back on the bottom gauge. And that means you're good to sword wave again. But realistically, you don't want to stay in this mode for too long. You just want to charge all the way to 40 or 99, assuming you're double S or higher, and then you want to move on. The other thing you can do is you should dodge because dodging will also restore the sword wave bar. And now you can do it again. Otherwise, you just want to keep attacking as quick as possible until her gauge is filled. That's all that matters. As soon as the gauge is filled, hopefully you've done it before you ran out of extra damage and this bar has depleted, then the only thing left is to activate her final ult and call in your QTEs. And if you do it right, it should look like this. So for the team rotation, unless your live is triple S, you won't have your ult to start. So you'll just tag straight out to Bianca. And you'll go straight into Bianca's rotation.
and then you'll swap to Rosetta. Hopefully Rosetta should have her ult ready, but in the rare case that she doesn't for the first time you swap in, just use some orbs or something and then you'll have it. And then once her ult is ready, you'll want to use it and hold attack. And you see this bar, this circle charging? That's from you holding attack and you get this second attack afterwards. Now watch this gauge ticks down. Now you can use some orbs or whatever, do some attacks, extra damage. As soon as Rosetta's finished, you swap back to live, and then you should immediately ult. Use at least four orbs. And then you can actually cut that off early, you don't have to finish the ult. So if Bianca's ready to swap to, just swap to Bianca as long as you ping the four orbs. And then that's it, rotate in Bianca, do Bianca's rotation again. Pretty simple. And that's the full team rotation. Now if you want, you can also just keep using Bianca. I don't know if that's worth doing or not yet, as I haven't tested in different game modes properly. But you can see there's no orb shortage like Karen, so you can just go again straight away. However, you're not gonna get the crit buff from Liv. A few final notes that are good to be aware of is that you can teleport around while you're using your sword waves by using the movement key, whatever that is on your device. Just don't dodge or you will dodge out of the sword wave mode and lose your sword waves. And this can actually push mobs around, so it can be a double-edged sword. You can push them in a way that's annoying or you can use it to group them a bit better. The next note is that her first ult transition, so after you activate her ult for the first time and you can't use orbs anymore and you can use sword waves, this form has super armor, meaning that as long as you're in it, you won't flinch or be interrupted from your attacks. Now, you can still be stunned and you do still take damage. And the final thing is when you are in the air and you are using your sword waves, you are invincible during that length. You can again still be stunned, but otherwise you're invincible. I don't know if that makes you immune to grabs or not. You may still be able to be grabbed. Now onto menus and ranks and that sort of thing. I think for most players, the two important things that you want to look at with Bianca and leveling is her rank, so SSS, and her weapon. Her pet is a nice to have, but it's certainly not essential. And you can see the pet skill here actually has suck, which is very helpful. Here with the pet skill at max level, we actually get a lot of crit damage increase and some base damage increase in sword form. So it is a very nice to have, but it is not essential. If you had a choice between the pet and the weapon, I would definitely pick the weapon, the six star. However, if you can't get either and you just run Bianca's five star, that's okay as well. It's just gonna be a little more cope as you struggle to get the bar filled. That said, if you're only using Bianca at S rank, her 5 star will do absolutely fine. Her 6 star is a lot more helpful, as you can see immediately gains 20 stacks when you enter into her Sigmata will. The main thing that's really helpful on her 6 star is the 30% crit, that's very nice. And the other thing is sword waves. You can instantly start with sword waves. As for Bianca's rank, here just S5 is 20% crit rate up, so that's very nice to have. You can see here at SS, this is really important. The stacks can now stack up to 99 times. This is absolutely huge and will increase Bianca's final ultimate move a lot. So if we come into this skill here, you can see all the way down the bottom if we scroll. This at S rank will only get 40 stacks. That is the maximum you can charge this. Whereas you saw in SS rank, you can charge to 99 stacks. Why is this important? Because for each stack, you increase the base damage of Bianca's ultimate move by 6%. That is disgustingly huge. So if you're at S rank, you're missing a lot of damage just from that final ult. So you definitely want SS rank from Pain Cage as soon as possible. If you want my opinion on which rank to leave Bianca at, I think SS is plenty fine and the 6 star weapon. However, there is also SS3 and Triple S to look at. I think Triple S is a very, very nice upgrade. And honestly, if I was looking to spend, that's probably where I would go. As personally, SS3 just doesn't seem like that great a deal to me. Triple S also makes Sword Waves a lot more fun. You can pretty much charge the bar with Sword Waves alone. But that's my take on Bianca's separate ranks.
Did you know that Bianca actually has two different QTEs? Don't worry about which one, they both do the same damage, but it's a nice little attention to detail that Kuro have added. As for your red orb, if you do a 3 ping, it's going to be a lot better. You can see it's got extra attacks, and if you do a yellow 3 ping, you can see again deals additional damage on a 3 ping. So you're really incentivized to use your 3 pings. That was a pretty long guide because we had to include the team rotations as well, but I think we condensed the whole thing down really well. If you got any more questions, feel free to join the Discord, links in the description, or you can come ask me on Twitch when I'm live.